Come on, muted. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Chloe Spencer, and this is Cooper, my daughter. Um, I'm one of the youth coordinators at the West Church. I want to welcome you to the service this morning. Um, I hope you all enjoyed an extra hour of sleep in bed last night, or my thoughts go out to all those parents whose kids are now getting up an hour earlier. <laughs> it's one or the other. And um, so in the youth work, we had a very special day yesterday. Luckily enough, before the October holidays, some of the restrictions on youth work um, eased up. So we kind of come under an umbrella of the education category. So we are allowed to run youth work um, for up to 30 people outdoors and indoors. Yes. So far, um, up to the October holidays, we've been meeting our young people in the park and playing kind of big wide games and stuff. But yesterday, we had our first full youth day inside the church. Normally around this time of year or after the October holidays, we would have been going on a retreat with the young people. Okay. So a weekend away, full of activities. But, um, just moving my coffee just in case. Um, but we can't do that. So Greg and I decided that we would do a youth day, kind of like we're away in the retreat, but do it here in Bankery. So we were able to be in the church building. Thank you to everyone who put in all that faffy work for opening the building for us. But we were able to go in, have a day full of activities, talks, worship, although we couldn't sing, so we just listened to worship um, and much, much more hanging out together. Um, obviously, it was a bit different. Um, COVID is happening at the moment, so all the leaders were wearing masks, we were social distancing from the young people, there was anti-back everywhere, um, but regardless, I think we couldn't get over how wonderful and how special it felt to be um, with the young people in that, in that sort of scenario again. It felt so good and it really felt like we were back to some sort of normality. Um, so we had a great day. It was a long day, but really, really fun. And we've got just a short video to show you some of the things that we got up to.
So as you can kind of see there, some of the things that we did in the day, our theme for the day was who is Jesus? So throughout the day, we had various different talks from some of the leaders and some of the young people about who Jesus was as a person um, and answering the question who Jesus is to us. Um, in amongst all of that, we did crafts. We um, ran after young people all around Jankery with Nerf guns. Um, all these uh, fun things. So we had a great day. Before we move on to worship, I just want to thank the people that have been really praying for the young people. <laughs> Sorry. Um, praying for the young people. We have a group of people that meet once a month and um, they are dedicated to focusing on the young people and praying for our youth work. As well as this group, we know there's lots of individuals that are doing the same thing. Um, Mommy, so thank you for that. Please Mommy, keep praying for us. Um, and we're just so Mommy, thankful to be able to spend this time with our young people Mommy, now. I don't know if you heard Mommy, anything I said. We're going to worship now.
Thank you. To Greg and Lucy, to Stuart and Emily, to Chloe for um, getting us started this morning. And um, for the first time, a brand new thing this morning, and that is that we're just about to do something together that requires me to put up a PowerPoint and share it with you all. And I didn't have it already ready. So my name is Tony Stephen. I get to be the minister here at the West Church. It's my privilege. And I'm talking to delay while I'm actually opening up the PowerPoint at the same time time so it's just busy loading and it's going to help us because we're going to say the lord's prayer together so the words are going to come up on the screen uh, i'm going to set the it so that you can unmute yourselves should be done now and um, and then when you've all unmuted yourselves and the words come up on the screen we're going to say this to together. not quick enough I'm not too slow <laughs> <laughs> So it's just loading up right now, and then I'll be sharing it as soon as I. <laughs> All right, we're just about there. <laughs> Thanks, Cooper. <laughs> All right, let's say this together. Let's pray. Let's pray. Our Father, 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 our I love how both everyone's saying different versions and everyone's saying it in different tones. <laughs> Thank you. So obviously it just sounds like a big noise to us and we hear bits and pieces of what everybody's saying. But the God who we are together to think about and focus on this morning is a God who made us to be in community and so much of the scriptures so much of those books we call the bible um, are written in the plural and um, so much of what's talked about is about yous and about us and about our and it's no accident that that prayer is an our prayer and so it's a privilege to say it together and um, we're going to focus on a, a really big topic uh, over the whole time this morning and it is about being part of a, a family together um, and chloe kicked us off helping us to think about that with cooper's help and now we're going to hear uh, some music that will help us to think. And a lot of you were involved in this. Um, so in, please enjoy. Some of us are big and tall, some of us are very small, some of us like pink and some like blue. Some of us like reading books, some of us like feeding cats, that's because we're different, me and you. Suspects to wear. All of us have different families. Some of us are very loud. Some of us don't make a sound. That's because we're different, you and me. 
We have operations all over the world, rescuing people from slavery. Because today there are criminals who abuse children, sell girls. How old is she? 12. 12? How much? 30? Yeah, yeah, I'm at eight. And force families into slavery. Criminals prey on the easiest target, the world's poor, because they expect no one to defend them. Pareho po tayo mga tao, hindi po tayo ibagay or hayop na pwedeng gamitin lang sa pansarili. But today, there are thousands of people gathering to seek justice for those in slavery. We are a group of lawyers, counselors, activists, and supporters. We are called International Justice Mission. And together, we form the largest international anti-slavery organization in the world. But slavery won't come to an end until criminals know they can't get away with it. So we partner with local police to arrest and prosecute criminals. This sends a message to slave owners. We will not go away. We stay with the survivors until they are healed, until they are free. Natulungan po ako ng IJM sa pamamigitan po na sa case ko, sa pagtulong po nila na ma-overcome ko po yung, yung fear. Each year, we rescue thousands of slaves and protect millions around the world. We are transforming how justice systems protect their citizens. To those who are still enslaved, we promise to find you. We will get you home to your families so you can have the freedom you deserve.
those of you who've been involved with us uh, for uh, a long time at the West Church will know one of the things we try and do is to try and do less, but to do that well so that we're not doing too much. And so we have over the years tried to focus in on the different things we'd like to partner with. And over the last few years, one of those has been International Justice Mission. And we devoted the whole of October on Sundays to highlight some of the different ways that International Justice Mission deals with the issue of particularly modern day slavery and human trafficking, but also the bigger issues of justice and injustice around the world. And so that was another opportunity to just see the bigger picture of the work that they are involved in, some of which some of us in the church have seen firsthand. And just a wee while, we're going to pray. Um, our prayer is going to be focused on IGM, um, uh, among other things. Um, I, I'm offering at you again to type into the chat this time anything that you would like prayed about. Um, whether I say it out loud or not, it will certainly be noticed. We've set the chat to just the hosts only this week, so that ensures just another little level of, level of privacy. So um, if you want to type things into the chat, be aware that it will be heard by Chloe or Greg or myself. Uh, I might mention some of them, I might not, but certainly God will also know what you are suggesting for prayer as well. Also, after um, our prayer, we're going to hear a little bit more about Alpha and the opportunities that are coming up next week. Um, and then after that, I'm going to be looking to see if anybody wants to help do our reading this morning. If not, that's absolutely fine. I'm delighted to do the reading this morning, but it's going to come from a book called John. So if anybody would like to do that, then either let us know in the chat or there's a way you can actually put a sort of thumbs up or a hand up on your Zoom screen. So if you want to do either of those for later on, that'd be great. And if you want to be typing anything into the chat um, that you want prayed for, that would be great. And I think that is coming in already. Thank you very much. And then as they come in, do know that they will be heard by us. Um, and also definitely by the God that we trust in and the God who, as we've heard, has a real focus on mercy, on injustice and compassion uh, and bringing protection to those who need it. So thank you for the names that you're being mentioned. There's two or three names have come in. Somebody's uh, mentioning about mental health difficulties. Uh, we know of folk who have uh, lost their mum. Uh, I know of a family who have, have lost one of their children this week. Um, for people in Sheffield, uh, for someone who has cancer, some people who are obviously dealing with COVID. And so thank you for mentioning these things already. As I come in, I'm going to start praying now. And as I said, part of our focus, our main focus this morning is going to be on IGM as well as the things that you are typing in. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for the work of International Justice Mission. Thank you for the way that they can help us to support them in prayer. Thank you for the uh, message we got um, asking us if we could urgently pray for a group of children that had just been freed from slavery with the support of local police. And confidentially, some of them are really in a bad way. So an urgent prayer request was put out that they will actually not just be freed, but also will survive some of the conditions they are in. They remind us that one in every roughly 130 women and girls are actually living in some kind of bonded labor or slavery. And so we pray for that continued work and for all those who are still waiting and still suffering. We praise God for a breakthrough in the rescue operations in Ghana. Last week, we heard about the work that's been done amongst children and we praise God for answered prayer. We thank you for the teams who were the police and the social welfare department, they are rescued nine children and arrested five suspects. We pray for the recovery and healing of those children and for their families as they are reunited. We also have been made aware of urgent prayer needed for a child labor case in South Asia. So pray for IJM and their partners as they work on this case of child labor in the cotton industry. They've identified a farm, we're told, where approximately 20 children are suspected to be working under these kinds of conditions. They investigated the farm and tried to attempt a rescue just two weeks ago, but there was a tip off and it was not able to go ahead. So please pray as they replan and work out to bring those children to safety. For the children around the world who are scared, who are afraid of the people who are supposed to be looking after them. For people who seek love, but find instead pain, maybe online. For young people who faced abuse and are waiting for relief. 
for all those young and old who've been freed from physical pain and humiliation but still feel the pain in their hearts we pray for relief for peace for healing and wholeness may the god of come peace comfort and justice draw near to you you are not alone we stand with you in jesus name amen there is a fantastic course which you've heard about over the last two or three weeks called alpha it's an opportunity to get together look at some of the basics of the christian faith and deal with some of the questions about faith and life that come up in a totally relaxed way we've just finished a course which has been a huge success for those people who are involved and you're going to hear from two more of those people just in a second and then um this next week we have two courses actually tuesdays and thursdays um, starting off so if you would like to be involved in those or you know anybody else you'd like to be involved in those then you're still able to go through the website and fill in the form to get in touch with the church office or anyone in the church and let us know about that and then we can direct you to get involved in that but meanwhile let's hear from folk who've been involved Hi there, my name is Rona and I'm really delighted to get the chance to share with you my sort of own experience with regards to Alpha and I just want to encourage you with all my heart that you try the Alpha course if you get the opportunity it's life changing and I think it actually saved my life at one point because um, life's you know not easy and when we go through difficult times it's so good to know that God is with us through Jesus Holy Spirit and you know, just get to learn to have a really strong relationship with Jesus and it's just so amazing I do hope you get the chance to do this um, and sorry if I'm rambling on, I don't know what else to say. Hi, I've just finished a 11 week alpha course run by Bankry West. Really good course, run so well, really friendly. I was skeptical to start with whether it was going to be my thing, but it is and it is really worth doing. It gives you a thirst and a knowledge like nothing else. You want to go and learn more and you want to explore more about Jesus, about God, about the Bible, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit weekend was really good and so worth doing. I just want to thank them all again for being so patient with us. Thank you. Thank you. So now we have an opportunity um, if anyone would like to um, help us with our reading this morning. If not, I'm delighted to do it. It's been a wee while since I've had the opportunity to do it. So I'm looking for MD who wants to wave, maybe somebody who hasn't done it before. First of all, you'll need to have a Bible. So let's see if you haven't got a Bible in the room, you'll need to run and get one and wave one in front of the screen. All right. And then if anybody does want to do the reading this morning, it's just going to be four verses, then also maybe you start waving at the screen as well. Or if you know how to do electronic, oh, Denise is the first one I've seen. So that's great. Let me get you unmuted. All right, Denise, you should be able to unmute yourself now.
And it's John 15, one to four, please. I am the true vine and my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, so that is in a book called John, uh, a book about the life and death and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth that comes in the sort of the second part of the Bible. And those verses are going to be something that's mentioned as we think about that story today. I have to admit, I've struggled this week to find time to sit down by myself and think about what I wanted to say. You might have seen me outside a coffee shop with a notebook. I was waiting to meet somebody. They were already pretty late and I was thinking, I don't have time for this. When a man who was walking past stopped and said, hello. Now, I have to admit, I thought two things to myself. First. I don't have time for this either. The second <clears throat> was a problem because I, I get this kind of awkward situation quite a lot in that there are a lot of people in Bankery who know who I am, but I don't always know their name, even if I know their face. And a lot of the time I've actually known them for so long now that it's long past the time when I could actually ask them their name again. So I struggled to put a name to this face. I just played it safe. I said, hi, nice day. Although I did have an umbrella because the rain kept coming on. He looked around him and he said, it is a beautiful day. You don't look like you're enjoying it though. That's not like you. If only he knew, I thought. I've been sitting here watching people with sour faces drive round and round in circles, hunting for a parking space. And all the time, probably thinking to themselves, well, what a great job he has sitting outside coffee shops all day. And in reality, I have a pile of books to read and take notes on. I've got a list of people who I should talk to. I've got staff to think about and look after. I've got music to choose. I've got videos to edit. I've got kids to take places at home. I've got emails waiting to be answered. I've got a sermon to write and then to record for Sunday. And instead, here I sit waiting for someone who might not even come and while I watch people with sour faces going round and round in circles. I know, he said. I hate it when they do that. Why are they in such a bad mood anyway? Why don't they just walk or take a bike or just park further away and walk for a change? It would be good for them. Anyway, what's your sermon supposed to be about then? Uh, I tried not to look flustered. I didn't realise that I'd said all that out loud. Um, I, I'm, I'm in the middle of a, a series on the letter called The Revelation, uh, but we've taken a break for a wee bit because of the October holidays. Uh, I was still a bit embarrassed about saying that out loud. Um, I'm still trying to work out what would be helpful to say this week, I said. I, I thought maybe something about what God is inviting us to be part of, and yet all the excuses we make. I see, he said. Um, so what does, does God invite you to be part of then? Good question, I thought. And in my head, I was also thinking then, where do I know you from? Well, uh, I said, um, thinking fast, the Bible says we are made to love God, to worship, to have a relationship with him, to enjoy him. But also we're made to be people who take care of the world that he made. But inside my head, I was thinking, if you ask my family, they might say something completely different. They might say that dad was made to pay for things or stop embarrassing them or to give them lifts places or to let them stay on their electronics for just a bit longer. And then if you asked one person connected to the church, 
they might say, well, his job is to get people to come to church. Another might say, well, his job is to make my children become Christians. And another might say, well, he's to make church services more like the way I like. And then another might say, well, he should be at every meeting. And other people say, well, he should get my old friends back to church. And another might say, well, he should get young people to behave. And another might say, well, he should be keeping everybody happy. And another might say, well, he should be spending his time doing something more useful than sitting about outside coffee shops in the rain waiting for somebody who's now nearly an hour late. Oh, didums, said the man. You really are feeling sorry for yourself. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I'd done it again. I'd just gone and said all that out loud. If, if, he, knew, if he knows people at the church, then that's it. I've got, I'll be given my marching orders. Come on, Tony, he said. I know you. You don't think like that normally. What, what is it you're always telling your young leaders? Smell the flowers. Live in the moment. Savour things. Learn to say no. Look, you're just a bit stretched. You're just a bit tired. You're obviously fed up waiting. Who is this guy? I thought. He seems familiar, but he's not from the church here, which is good. <laughs> Maybe I knew him somewhere else. Maybe he was at university with me. Hey, he said, doesn't the Bible say... You're made to be part of God's family. Well, that's right, I said. In fact, I'd just been reading a book that says, as human beings, we can't ever be happy or fulfilled alone. We're all made to be part of a family. So what's the problem then, he asked. Well, I didn't want to say or think anything actually at this point. Not only was I worried about what I might say out loud, but he touched a raw nerve. Thinking about family is great when I think about my kids and my wife. But it's different when I start to think about my own mum and dad and the fact that they're not around anymore and haven't been around for a long time. And I'm, I'm not one to bear grudges. But I do find myself starting to think, well, they did miss my wedding. And they missed the birth of their grandchildren. And they're not around to ask questions about what I was like or, or show photos of what I've been up to. They've never seen anything of what I've done here in Bankery. They've never seen me serve the West Church. They, they've they missed all that. And I can't help, I know I shouldn't, but I can't help thinking sometimes that I've been left alone. That's not true, he said. And you know it. You're just feeling sorry for yourself. You're making excuses and you're thinking about yourself again. I was, I was, <laughs> I was stunned. I was sure I hadn't said a word out loud. He just went on. Tony, he said, when I said a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, it only bears fruit when it remains in the vine. I meant it. When I said I've told you this so that my joy in you will be complete, I meant it. When I said there are many parts in my body, but you all belong to one another, I meant it. You know this, he said. You've been talking about it for years. Relationships, relationships, relationships. That's what you do. That's who you are. You know, young people don't grow just by coming to church. They grow by belonging, by taking part. Remain in me, I said. That's what people in Bankery are so great at, making you feel like you belong, whoever you are. I made you all to belong to each other. You can't function by yourself. I meant it when I said the most important thing is to love me and to love each other. You all belong in my family. So your mum and your dad didn't miss your wedding or the birth of your children. They didn't miss you seeing you build all these relationships with people here. They didn't miss a step or a trip or a giggle of your kids because you are surrounded by mums and dads and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters in this coffee shop, in this street, on the Zoom service, at the school gates, in the food bank, round a kitchen table in Bankery. Your family are out there leading Bible studies at their universities. They're telling people about me in the street. They're playing music in their church. They're looking after COVID patients in wards. They're teaching your kids in your schools. They're even driving round and round in circles with sour faces right now looking for parking spaces. Tony, you have been adopted into my family and that family is never going to split up or die or ever leave you alone. 
I was crying by this stage because now I knew who he was and I didn't know what to say so I just sat there I have to go he said it was good to talk by the way the person you're meeting is going to be here in a wee while he missed a turning he's going to call again in a minute when he realises and anyway he smiled pointing at my notebook he says you have a sermon to finish my phone started to ring I looked down to see who it was and when I looked up, he'd gone. I answered the phone. Hi. What? what? Oh, don't worry about it, I said. Take your time. I have all the time in the world. My name is Scott Harrison. <laughs> Just listen. This is my wife. David killed Goliath, though it seemed impossible. Who'd have thought a single stone could make a giant fall? Cause he was just a kid and by comparison was small But held within the hands of God he was invincible So this I will remember when the battle comes to me To fix my eyes on things above and not on what I see So in the deepest strife Great defeat, my unfair advantages that Jesus stands with me. And all it ever takes is a little seed of faith, big enough to bring down every giant. I don't have to be afraid in the hands of God, I'm brave. He's
He's training me to bring down every child So I will overcome my Goliath 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 Let's pray. And now may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you all now and always. Grace and peace. Amen. You're going to get the opportunity to join a breakout room in just a wee while. Please do join for just even a few minutes and say hello to the people that are there. And if you have to go, that's absolutely fine. Thank you so much for joining in this morning.